Exactly one year ago, I attempted to conquer the skies like our ancestors. I mean, I tried to build a model plane from scratch. And as you can see, that didn't go so well. RIP. Now, for those of you who are experts at this, quick disclosure. It was my first time trying to build a model plane. I have no experience flying model planes. I also tried to DIY everything, including the transmitter and receiver, because I'm an engineer who's also broke. Nice combo. Now, after seeing weeks of work go down the drain by my own hands last year and not having achieved anything remotely close to the needed results other than a terrible taxi, I decided to set the corpse of my previous build to rest. Yes, it was an embarrassing adventure, but I chose not to give up. It's been over one year since the day I published that video and here I am, like an Avenger, once again setting my sights on building a model plane. A lot has changed since the last build, so let's go over what sets this build apart from the last. First of all, the design. As you could have seen if you compare the thumbnails between the last time and this time, I used the model plane tutorial from Joy Planes, shout out to them, and honestly it was a fantastic tutorial, easy to follow and with all the necessary resources. But here's the deal, where I live, I couldn't just walk into a store and ask for 5mm XPS foam which they used in the tutorial, and let's not even talk about the cost of buying it online and getting it delivered to where I live. I did find a place to custom order styrofoam from another state in my country, which to be frank, the cost of transportation to my location almost got me broke for a while since they classified its styrofoam as fragile, but all for science, right? Another issue with the previous build was the complexity of the design. It didn't fit the quite brittle and honestly useless styrofoam that I had bought. This along with a few other bad decisions which ranged from terrible build quality from my end, lack of stabilizer control and terrible wing balance on the frame led the previous attempt to a personal failure which I rated a 9.5 over 10, one of my worst ever. Coming to the present build, the question is, what's the difference? Now, because I have no experience flying model planes or pretty much anything that hasn't crashed so far, I needed a way to make it durable, lightweight and easy to repeat design that provided stability and didn't consume more than a certain amount of time to build, that way I could do multiple tests and revisions until I hit the goal. That's when I came across this god-given video by Basement Creations about flying punks using KFM airfoils. It was in that moment I knew I had found the treasure I was looking for. In all seriousness, I started doing some more research and by that I mean I just went to Google and did some typing and tada, I had gotten quite some detailed information on how the KFM airfoils work. The KFM airfoil which actually stands for Client Fogelman airfoil is a simple airfoil design that has a single or multiple steps along the length of the wing. It was originally developed in the 1960s for paper airplanes. Now, the advantages of this design are in its ease of construction, stability and a variety of variations of its design, each with a tested strong point. Now, after doing more googling, I mean research, I settled up on the KFM3 airfoil, which is what Basement Creations also used in his video. I settled on KFM3 because it has the following strong suits, a high lift to drag ratio, stable flight characteristics, progressive lift generation, reduced stall risk, efficient low speed performance, maneuverability and smooth riding, durability and versatility. Now, with design concept decided, I got to work. Using basement creations dimensions as a template for my plane, I opened up Fusion 360 and designed my own BFM3 airfoil with two elevon control surfaces and a fixed rudder. Taking into account the size, KFM step distance calculation and the available materials at my disposal. Here's the final design. With this design completed, you can see every important part of the plane necessary, but my foolish, rushing self left out an essential part in the final construction, which was probably the most stupid thing I did in this build, so comment it down below before the first test flight if you see it. With the 3D model done and the frame design concluded, I went on to designing the electronics for Operation Flying Plank. Most people buy their transmitters and receivers and just hook it up, but I said no. The broke engineer in me wasn't going to succumb to having more expenses, so I picked up the old remote I had made and decided to build another receiver while tweaking and making some modifications to the old remote. Now, here's the electrical design for the build. This design also exhibits simplicity in its electrical setup, which was one of the major aims. Just like the previous design, we have a transmitter and receiver, but this time I made some significant changes. For elevon control, I have two joysticks, one for up and down and the other for left and right, with a separate knob potentiometer for throttle control. This was devised to help a beginner like me have a simple control interface for this particular flying plank. 
There's also the NRF 2 wireless transceiver for wireless radio communication and an Arduino Nano as the microcontroller. There's also two 1860C batteries in series to power up everything. For the main plane, we have a 10-inch prop which was coupled with a 1000 kV motor and a 30 amp ESC, which is connected to a 3S LiPo battery that is also connected to a bulk converter which supplies the 5 volts for the two servo motors. Of course, we have the Arduino Nano and the nrf 24 l one transceiver on this side too. With the designs out of the way, let's get into the actual building process. But before that, if you like the work I do here at Legends and want to see more project builds, I would really appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel and turn on post notifications. I support me and you get notified every time a new project is released. You can also check out my personal and Legends' social media platforms where I try to post project updates which would also be linked in the description. On the same note, over 93% of everyone who watches isn't subscribed. So why not subscribe now or else I see circuits in your future. <laughs> All documentation and resources, including the code, 3D model, and electrical designs for this project will be my GitHub repo, which I linked in the description. Now, the build. I started out with these 2.17cm thick styrofoam sheets, which I cut into the measurements as in the design. For the KFM3 F4, we have three separate layers, each lined up on top of each other. This comprises of three sheets, one 75% and the other 50% the length of the base sheet. To glue everything together, I did consider this two-part acrylic glue for the edges, but it just downright melts the styrofoam. So I stuck with hot glue, but note that hot glue at some certain temperatures does melt styrofoam, so you can try out the lower temperature hot glue guns. After that, we have the base KFM. Next, I got a curved edge which I did by drawing up a curved edge on paper and just shaving the edge into shape, ironically similar to how I did it in 3D card design. With that done, I proceeded to tape up the entire leading edge horizontally first with paper tape and then vertically also with paper tape. After that, I proceeded to make the early ones and insert the modified servo control horns which are also taped and glued in. With the frame done, I went on to the electronics. I started out by building the receiver circuit to work with the radio transmitter. I then took some time to modify the already existing remote, and of course with everything engineering and programming related, I got some issues. This I resolved by finding out a single line of code to set the data rate for the transceivers was not compatible with the modules that I had. Now, I was able to get the receiver up and running, get throttle control working and then electron control working all wirelessly. This same remote was what I used in one of my recent projects, which was a remote controlled PVC pontoon boat with an onboard water quality monitoring system. To learn how I built it from scratch, you can check it up here if you're interested. Now, after the tests were done on the breadboard, I shifted to soldering everything onto a Vero board with all the necessary connectors and components needed.
With that done, I set up the T connector for the ESC to connect directly to the battery. Once that was done, I proceeded to test everything for the remote control and after that I measured and cut out the part of the frame that would hold all the electronics which I refer to as the electronic hub. The hub was made using two layers of straw board just to ensure its durability and once it was done, I set in the electronics in the most size efficient manner that I could actually come up with. And this was our end result. Now of course, the main question, did it fly or not? Well if you look at it, you can see that I stupidly forgot the rudder. How? I don't know to this very moment, but it was such a mistake that I literally didn't want to put out this video, but here we are. Now, here's the first medium flight test with the obvious lack of the rudder. Okay, recording. I didn't use enough thrust and after looking like it was going to fly, it went all downhill. But I didn't give up. With a damaged prop and no confidence, I decided to test and check if this could actually gain altitude and I'm glad to say that I did. Now, also without the rudder because I did not know that I forgot the rudder. I replaced the propeller blade and for some reason I couldn't control the servos anymore. So in all glory of my laziness, I simply set the servos at the max 11 angle for it to ascend just to see if it would happen coupled with the higher throttle speed. And here are the three test flight results. Now keep this in mind, all this time, I did not know like I was missing the rudder, like I said earlier. We experiments actually showing the KFM F4 being viable as it ascended in altitude, although I did wreck the entire electronic hub and I plan on replacing it, trimming off the broken pieces and trying a one prop and two prop configuration in the coming months. So for anyone who has watched this far, the engineering process is a pain, but it will yield results. Don't give up, re-strategize, restructure, take a step back and make the necessary improvements. I assure you that version 3 of this journey will definitely be successful. I already plan on using a boost converter with low input voltage, a new motor, an ESC, a longer electronic hub to allow for a change in the battery placement position in order to ensure it's not tail heavy or nose heavy, and an even smaller set of receiver electronics with properly trimmed wires and a receiver. With that, we've come to the end of this video. Hope you learned something or at least got inspired to try your own build. If you want to see how I built a robotic arm in record time or how I built 20 plus projects in 6 months, you can check it out here. I'll see you in the next one. Sub or else.